and welcome to Teacher Jimbo's channel. Today we'll be going over Algebra 2, Unit 2, Lesson 1, Practice. We made it all the way to Unit 2. If you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe at the button that's somewhere down here. All right, let's get started. Problem 1. A rectangular schoolyard is to be fenced in using a wall of the school for one side and 150 meters of fencing for the other three sides. So if this over here, we're looking from above, this is going to represent our school. And we're going to use a fence to fence in three sides. Um, that's going to be, let's change colors here. So the fence is going to be these three sides. And the amount of fencing that we have is going to equal 150 meters. I always like to draw a picture even before I finish reading the question because it helps me visualize it as I'm taking in the content of the question. Some people like to read first and then draw. The area in square meters of the schoolyard, so I know I'm a rectangle, I'm no area equals length times width. This is gonna be my length, that's gonna be my width, is a function of the length x in meters of the sides perpendicular to the school wall. So this guy's gonna be x and this guy's gonna be x. Now to have my length times width, well, I know my length, he's x, but I'm gonna to have to multiply him by my width, which is my w, which is this guy over there, question mark. So I'm gonna to have to figure out what is question mark in terms of x. Now looking, I realize, I don't know. So I always go back to my question. I say, what extra information did they give, that, give me that might be helpful? And in this case, it's 150 meters of fencing. So I say, hmm, this has to be 150 meters of fencing, which means, 2x, because we're going to have this wall and this wall, plus my question mark is going to equal 150, which means I can redefine my question mark as 150 minus 2x, because it's going to be whatever we use for those two sides. We're going to subtract that from the 250 of fencing that we used, and that's going to get us what our width is. So when I'm writing my function in terms of f, in terms of x, I'm going to use this guy for my width. And I do believe that's the hardest part of the question. I'm going to multiply out because that's what makes me happiest. I'm going to say 150x is equal minus 2x squared. And we wrote our expression for a of x. Let's go. Problem number two, two. What is the area of the schoolyard for when x is 40? Well, that just means we want a of 40, which is going to be 150 times 40 minus 2, 40 squared. And this is when you pull out your handy dandy calculators. You realize 150 times 40 is 6,000. We have 2 times 40 squared, which is going to be 1,600. 6,000 minus 3,200, because 2 times 16 is 32. Add the two zeros, we subtract, and we get 2,800. We go back to our question. We're talking about area. We're talking about meters, which means our units are meter squares. And that came out ugly, so we reread it. So 2,800 meters squared is our answer. All right, make sure to have your handy dandy calculators available. And um, so in case you need to do some calculations. Three, what is a reasonable domain for A in the context? So domain means inputs. And what we are inputting for X in this case is X is the length in meters of each of the sides perpendicular to the school wall. So that means it's going to be this length over here. Now the shortest this length could be is, we're going to say it could get real close to zero, but we can't be zero. So I'm going to say x has to be greater than zero. And then the longest this length could be, well, the longest it could be and have both sides would be 75, but like a tiny bit smaller than 75. So we're going to say it's less than 75. So x is somewhere in between zero and 75. And we know that because the total amount we have would be 150. So if like this was 75 and that was 75, that would be 150 and that wouldn't leave any for the width. So it has to be less than 75, but we could also have really itty bitty walls and have the width be almost 150 meters. So that would be our domain. When we're looking at these questions, make sure domain means the input and always look, it always defines what our inputs with in our question. Let's go on to problem number two. Noah finds an expression for v of x given the volume of an open top box in cubic inches. So I got my box that has an open top. Looks something like this. Possibly you made it in class. It's, that represents that it's open. 
in terms of the length of inches of the cutout squares that he used to make. So we had our rectangle piece of paper, we cut out the squares of the corners like that, and we folded them up to make a box. So the length of the squares ends up being the height of the box. Um, this is the graph Noah gets if he allows x to take any value between negative 1 and 5. What would be a more appropriate domain for Noah to use instead? Well, x can't be a negative number because it's the amount of space we're taking up. So I would say we would start with x greater than 0. And then looking at my graph here, when we get to about 2.5, we see that it turns into negative numbers, which means at that point, our boxes are too big and our box is not boxing anymore. So our highest domain, I'm gonna be a little safe here and say less than 2.5, or you could say 2.7 in this case, um, would be a more reasonable domain here. Cause after that, our box is unboxing and that domain won't make sense. What is the approximate maximum volume for his box? So this right here represents the corners he cuts. And this over here represents volume because our input is the corners he cuts, the output is the volume. The maximum vol volume he reaches is about 15 cubic inches. So it'd be inches cubed. So always make sure that you're thinking about the input and the output, what your X values are and what your output values are. And to define some of these answers and always make sure to have your correct units. All right, let's go on to the next question. Now, if you want to pause this video in between any of these, I recommend it so you can go over and make sure these make sense. May wants an, to make an open top box cutting out corners of a square piece of cardboard. So her cardboard's a square. The cardboard is 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. So 10 by 10. The volume in cubic centimeters of the open top box is a function of the length of side X cut out of the square cutouts. So we have four square cutouts again that look like this. I'm going to say they're cutting out. This is x. That's also x. They're all x. Write an expression for the volume. So volume of x is going to be length times width times height. Now let's talk about this is going to be, let's call this the length. Let's call this the width. And the height is going to be when we fold up those corners and the height is actually going to be x. The height, we're going to call them x. So the volume, we know the height is going to be x, and I'm going to put an x over here. Now the length, we have to define in terms of x. And I do know that this whole thing is 10 centimeters. So if the whole thing is 10 centimeters, and I cut out this x over here and that x over there because I'm taking out those corners, I'm taking out 2x. And that gets me the length. And because this is a square, the width is actually going to be the same thing which is two times X and the length is this case, but it works because it's a square and the sides are the same. So we're gonna have 10 minus two X and I'm just gonna say squared because we have two of them. Or you could write this as our length is 10 minus two X times our width, which is 10 minus two X times our height, which is X. What is the volume of the box when X equals three? So when, when X equals three, I'm just gonna evaluate my function at three, and I'm gonna use this top dude to save a step, which gets me two times three squared times three. So two times three is six. So it's 10 minus six squared times three. I'm using my order of operations here. So first I'm doing exponents. So four squared times three, or parentheses, and then exponents, which is 16 times three, and 16 times three is 48. I'm talking volume, so my units are gonna be cubed. I'm talking centimeters, so it's 48 centimeters cubed. And that gets me my answer. All right, so there we go. Pause the video if you need to go over it again, and we are going on to the next question. The area of a pond is covered by algae. The area of a pond covered by algae is one fourth a square meter on day one, and it doubles each day. So on day one, it is one fourth a square meter. On day two, it doubles, so it's gonna be two fourths or one half on day four, three, it's gonna be four fourths, which is equal to one. I'm gonna simplify day four, it's gonna be two. Day five, it's gonna be four. And day six is gonna be eight. Complete the table. I'm done.
Let's go on to the next one. Problem five. We got to go back to recursive functions. I love it. Here's a table showing the values of P. Define P recursively using function notation. So we're going to define P based on the previous value. Now looking at this, I see I am multiplying by one tenth each time. So this tells me it is a geometric value. And I am going to start with my initial value, which is we're going to say P of X is going to be the previous value. So P of N times one times one tenth. And there we got our recursive function. That's it. So defining recursively means we're defining it based on the previous term. To get the next term, we multiply the previous term by one tenth. And that is it. That's a lot easier than it seems. The language is the hard part. The table shows two sloths population growing over time. I like sloths. I learned today that sloths have ears that kind of look like human ears, but they're all covered by fur. So let's see if we can get this all to fit on one screen. Yes, so we have the time, which is represented by years since 1990. We have the population, which is represented in thousands, population one and population two. So two different sloth populations. So this, and then we have population two. Describe a pattern in how each population changed from one year to the next. 39 to 37 to 35. Well, I'm subtracting two for each of these guys. And then 90 to 76 to 65 to 55.3 to 47. Um, let's see what we're subtracting. So 90 minus 10 is 80 minus additional 3.5. So it's going to be minus 13.5. And then 76.5 down to 65 is going to be 11.5. And then 65 down to 55.3 is going to be 9.7. Minus, minus, minus. I don't see any pattern here. And I don't think it's a geometric pattern either. So I don't see a pattern. We could do one more. 53.5 to 47. That's going to be minus 8.3. So in this case, we subtracted two. Then another. Mm, I don't see a pattern off the top of my head. So let's go ahead and describe this. OK. Describe the pattern how each population changed from one year to the next. Well, the population two was subtracted by two. And then this population, I cheated and I looked at the answer. And this is minus 15% each time. Now, for a question like this, that's a review question at the end of the practice set. I wouldn't spend a lot of effort looking for exactly what the percent subtraction is, um, unless you really wanted to. But so it's a 15% de decrease each year. Um, put in the comments if you want to know how they calculated that. But I don't think it's relevant for looking at the patterns that we're looking at for this question. So I'm not going to go over that. So we describe how the population changed. The pattern continued for many years based on the information fill on the extra rows on the table. So this is going to be 29, 27, 25, 23. And then here, so minus 15%. Um, would be the same thing as our last value times 85%. So 47 times 85%, if I put it into my handy dandy calculator, which all of you should have handy dandy calculators out and ready to use for lessons like this, because we are mathematicians, not just trying to do, gives me 39.95. And I multiply that by 85%, and I get 33.96, and I multiply that by 85%, I'm going to get 28.9, and I multiply that by 0.85 or 85%, and I get 24.5. So on the same axis, draw the graphs of the two populations over time. So we have year 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Draw the little dashes. The highest we go is 90, so let's count by 10s. 10, 20, 30, 40. 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. So the first population, let's color yellow, is going to be year one, year zero, we're at 90. Year two, we're at 76.5. Year three, we're at 65. Year four, we're at 47. No, 55. 
no, year three, we're at 55. Year two, we're at 65. Okay. Year one, we're at 76. Year two, 65. Year three, 55. Year four, 47. Let's move that up. Year five, 39, which is over there. Year six, 33. Year seven, 28. And this is a weird question where we're sketching because these numbers are so specific, it's actually pretty difficult to sketch. And this should actually look curvy rather than less curvy. And then our second guy, we're going to do it in pink. We start at 39. So we're at 39, 38, 37, 36, 35. We get down to 25. And that's also a terrible graph, but it should look something along the lines like this. And this is not a great thing to sketch because the axes are so different. Does population two ever equal population one? If so, if so, when? Um, so in this case, and again, this is way more complex than some of the questions we did in the past. With a better graph, which is not mine, what we see is these two graphs over here, this is kind of coming over to 35 and this is gonna coming down to 35. So let's make that yellow or coming down to 25. So we see they get real close. And then if we kind of sketch to see what's happening continuously, they should meet and they should actually have the same population at some point. Um, but I apologize for my very terribly sketched graphs. If you were doing this, I recommend you actually go to like a graph maker and just plug in the points to see what it looks like or create a more distinct graph. But these points are pretty difficult to plot and just to sketch. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. Please don't let these bad uh, sketches deter you from my next video. And I am looking forward to seeing you next time.